Hello everyone, my name is Banjo Obiyami. I'm a senior research engineer at 26 Technologies. We are a firm that specializes in cybersecurity and AI. And today I'm going to talk to you about how we built a DDoS testbed with Docker. So what is a DDoS? DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service. And it's a cyber attack that disrupts a target system with network traffic from multiple sources. So this is when you think of a website getting taken down by a bunch of botnets, controlled computers sending traffic to shut down a server and then legitimate clients can't actually respond to that server. But DDoSes have also evolved to be more craftier. So instead of just spamming uh, a network service with multiple different IP addresses, they've used craftier attacks that are not really volume based, but just exploiting a specific uh, loophole in a system. For example, in Apache servers, there was a vulnerability named Kill Apache that can send a bunch of uh, overlapping bytes in a payload in a header. And once that hits that server, it ends up spending a lot of resources trying to respond to that. And if you send enough of these malicious packets, it can actually shut down the server with very little effort. Here's an example PCAP of that said attack. We can see all these overlapping bytes cause the server to keep uh, making remnants of the page that it's trying to serve in multiple chunks. So this is a pretty long packet, about the length of 6,196. And just sending this packet over and over to the server can actually make the server respond very, very badly by trying to generate all these different responses to that request and it's going to eventually shut down the server. Compared to a normal packet, which is kind of benign, the benign packet is just a simple get request with nothing crazy going on here. This is what a, a normal packet will look like to a server. It is up, oh, get a request, send data back, not any kind of crazy instruction that's forcing it to do extra work. So with that kind of set up, we kind of thought, how can we build a model that can automatically detect malicious traffic? Because we want to be, I myself can look at a PCAP and say, oh, this is bad. It's going to cause the server to do all this extra work. I don't want to actually process that. But how can we put a model in front of before the packet even responds and even block that packet out or identify this is a bad actor? And in order to build a model, we also need data. So one of the first things researchers do is what are the public data sets I can use to kind of train my model to identify these type of attacks? Well, there are problems if you try to use a public data set, especially in this uh, intrusion detection space. First of all, there's poor providence of most of how these data sets were generated. So they don't know how this data set was generated, how can it be replicated, what were the conditions, and all sorts of stuff. What was the network like? What, who are the people using the network? What are the statistics about this? A lot of these data sets vary so much that it's really hard to get a, a true baseline for researchers to really start out with. And most of the time, these data sets are frozen in time. They run an experiment for a week, and they generate a bunch of data, and that's it, and they're never going to update it again. So you're really stuck with that, and you really have no way to kind of iterate on the data or train new models based on that. And also, it's, the data composition cannot be clear as well. Sometimes it's just all benign traffic, or you don't know where the attack traffic is. It's just very hard to identify what period of time I should be trying to look at, where, how much percentage of benign traffic came in, etc. So just a lot of poor data quality issues all around when trying to use public data sets. So that brings us to the next question, like, why don't we just generate our own data? And of course, there are problems with generating your own data. First of all, researchers would like to capture live data, but that's almost always a non-starter because a lot of privacy concerns. You can't reproduce somebody doing running on your website, running traffic all the time. So it's just very pretty much a non-starter to try to capture live data and build off of that. So we're not going to capture live data. Let's set up our own network. And that could be expensive. If I have to get physical devices or spin up cloud resources, I have to have all this complex configuration to make sure all my resources talk to each other. 
this is not really ideal for a testing environment because you could be spending a lot of time just figuring out how to set things up and buying hardware, buying cloud resources, and it's just very hard for individual resources to kind of start from this kind of blank slate. Let me just build my own network. So then the next step is how about a container network? So this is very constrained, is reproducible. I can scale it to many different type of places, cloud, my machine, a supercomputer in the lab. And it's very simple compared to just having lots of other headaches to worry about if standing up your own network. So the container network is really kind of the ideal environment for researchers to iterate and build models upon. So how can we create a containerized environment to create intrusion detection data sets is kind of the next question that comes when we're thinking from a research perspective. The requirement we set out for ourselves is that we are able to generate data on any hardware that meets a minimum set of requirements. Like I said, I want to run this on my laptop, on a cloud machine, on our supercomputer lab. I want to be able to do results anywhere and kind of be able to not have to worry it only works if I have this amount of RAM or memory on my machine. The, da the data generated must actually have DDoS attack behavior. So some of those data sets, they don't actually have DDoSs in them or it's fully really unclear. So we want to be able to ensure that we actually are getting the desired effect in our data set so we can actually use that to, for our model training. Uh, the software should be extensible and enable new components in the future. So Tom, sometimes we want to test one simple attack. We want to chain different type of attacks together, have different type of clients, different uh, servers we're sending traffic to. So we should be able to not only create one scenario, but able to update this as scenarios uh, evolve. And it should allow for user flexibility and configuration. So DDoS scenarios can become all sorts of different things. So we need to be able to be able to, to change up how we want to run the attacks, what the input parameters are, and change how our data is getting through. So extensibility, user flexibility, and configuration are, are big for kind of research environments. So with those kind of requirements in mind, we came up with a tool called Magic Wand. So Magic Wand is an open source Python platform to provide high quality, reliable, and replicable data sets for DDoS attacks. So the key here is reliable and replicable because those public data sets, once they're there, it's out there, and you don't know how it's done. Can we reproduce our data set time and time again so we ensure that we know that the data we have is solid? Uh, Magic One uses a command line interface to generate packet uh, PCAP files and has labels for the attack and benign clients in that PCAP. So a lot of the times we don't know, in public data sets, we don't know if this is an attack or benign or it's very hard to figure that out. We, for machine learners, we want to be able to have a very nice structured data set they can begin using right away and start training models on that and not having to waste time to figure out which one's a client, which one's an attack, and stringing all the data together. And then Magic Wand uses Docker and JSON files to provide custom and extensible data generation framework to generate a multitude of network traffic PCAPs. So we really want that easy way to kind of just change environment variables on the fly, have different type of attack scenarios. And we want to keep it very simple, have a JSON file, have a Docker image, and you guys kind of just spin up your the framework you want and then get your data. So here's an example of a magic wrong configuration. We have, basically we just set our attack benign, our system of tet, our round trip time sensor, and then you name that run. So this is kind of the base configuration. And then you just run config, that config file, and then magic one does all the rest. It spins up the Docker containers, it'll output data at the end, and researchers can just use that data and begin their model training. So in practice, here's how kind of the run works. When a Docker image is spun up for this for this ex environment, we have the benign tra traffic, uh, our attack traffic, and our round trip time monitor, and they all send traffic to that Apache server. And it responds when the run is finished, uh, the PCAP, the CSV, JSON metadata is all put out. So it's very seamless. All the necessary components spin up, they do their your things send traffic to each other, and then we have a nice data. So very simple, very clean, very reproducible. Okay, so this is how we leverage Docker. 
So one of the main challenges we first had was how do we simulate multiple legitimate IP addresses within a single container? When you look at a Docker container, it gets assigned a, a single IP. So we can do uh, Docker inspect, we get an IP address uh, for that container. So one way we thought about it is we can just spin up multiple of the same Docker containers to get multiple different IPs, but obviously it does not scale well. As eventually we're going to run out of resources, it becomes hard to just run this on my laptop versus a supercomputer. I don't want to have to spin up a new Docker image for each unique client or attack. So this way it was kind of a non-starter. So we couldn't just say spin up more resources. Uh, scalability is a big thing, so we don't want to have to worry about spinning up a bunch of Docker images. What we really wanted was, okay, we have one client uh, Docker image, one attack Docker image. How can we simulate multiple IPs from this single image that actually look real to the server? So one thing we leveraged was the Docker network. Because these, thing, these images are in the same Docker network, we can actually take advantage of the gateway that's supplied through all of the, the Docker images. So one thing, the first thing we tried was using uh, the IP command to actually add synthetic IPs to the actual client images. And once those synthetic IPs are created, you can kind of see that we have a whole list of IPs that are mapped to a single uh, the Docker IP that's given in the network. So these are all valid IPs in terms of a TCP state connection. So they're all going to generate a unique IP in a PCAP file. And with that, we can utilize those IPs to be added to our Python script. So whenever a GET request is sent from one of the images, it's going to use one of those predetermined IPs that we've already generated. And those are establishing a real TCP connection to the actual server. And on the server side, we can open a, a tunnel that actually allows those uh, synthetic IPs we created on the client and attack images to actually exist in the in the routing for that server. And basically, once we, we have that route list, as you see that the gateway that was created, all those IPs that we generated on the client and attack are actually now valid for that server. And then once the run is complete, we can actually look at the PCAP and see that each source, we have multiple different source IPs. So that's, that's what was key is to make sure that we can have different IPs in an each run instead of just having a single IP for attacking client. I want it to be random each run. So the next challenge was how do we dynamically create experiments using static Docker Compose files and varying environment variables? So kind of our base config, which defines our run, is that that that, that the say uses attack, uses benign client, etc. Each of those uh, components are actually backed by another JSON file. So these are the actual configuration set that are in in that actual component, and all those components actually have uh, Docker compose file that maps to it. So we have the, the JSON config file that has the, the variables we want to edit, and those are mapped to an actual Docker compose file that gets spun up when the run starts. And after reading the documentation, you can find that you can use environment variables actually in a compose file. So it's kind of very easy to just have that JSON file and then uh, set the environment variables from reading that JSON file. And then to spin up multiple compose files, uh, the great documentation from Docker allows to tell us you can basically just run multiple compose files in a run. So our, our command line tool is able to read into JSON config files, set the environment variables, and then run Docker compose on all the necessary compose files that run. And the last challenge we had to do was how do we calibrate our system based on the current hardware resources? So we have that single JSON file that we had earlier. If I run this on my laptop, it can the, these configurations will probably shut down the server. But let's say I have a, a beefier machine. This configuration might not actually damage that, that server. It's not, so it's not really inducing a DDoS effect on the beefier server. So if you wanted to do we would have to manually change these variables and find out what that breaking point is. But 
Of course, we don't want to manually do anything, so we can leverage Stalker stats to kind of see how is the system actually being affected from the attack and client images. So Docker stats gives you a nice output of how much memory is being used, CPU is being used, and we can kind of we can capture that information during a, a run. So for our calibration purposes, we do two runs, one with the only benign traffic and one with only attack traffic. And by capturing that Docker stats output and then making a nice CSV out of that, we can actually measure the differences between benign and attack runs. So for example, one run one might only use X percent of memory and attack might only use the smaller Y percent of memory. For a DDoS condition to occur for one of our attacks, we're measuring the memory impact. So we can say, okay, try the run with these parameters. Oh, it didn't run. So it didn't have that desired uh, effect compared with nine only and attack only. Increase the stats for the attack and do a run again. So we can keep iteratively doing this until we see, oh, okay, now the benign traffic is only one third of what the attack memory percentage was and say, okay, that's a good DDoS condition for us. So the calibration is a bit fuzzy. It's not an exact science, but it gives researchers a, a way to see, okay, what are this? How can I make an apples to apples comparison if I ran my experiment on my laptop versus a, a computer, a supercomputer that has much more resources? Okay, so now we're going to walk through how we can actually use Magic Wand and what are some of the outputs it produces. All right, let's see how Magic Wand actually works. First, let's look at the, the repo. Is, uh, Magic Wand is an open source repo hosted on GitHub. Uh, nice documentation and code on how to run stuff. You can install it via pip, pip install Magic Wand. And all the images are on Docker Hub, so once the run starts, it'll pull the necessary images it needs. Okay, so when you have Magic One, the first thing you can do is initiate a project. So we would do that. See so in DockerCon, all our stuff is there. So as we know, Magic One runs on the configurations. Uh, this is kind of the base configuration with our Apache Kill Run sets up the attack the benign, the system and the tests, the round trip time center, and what we call this run. So what researchers really have to do is just really edit the, the JSON configurations. So I'm going to let's make this run a bit stronger. So the 75 uh, have the duration be 50 seconds. And I'm going to change our system under test, the Apache server as well. Have it run for 75 seconds as well. Let's go there. So that's really all the uh, researchers have to do for kind of the runs we have available. You just change that JSON file. As we mentioned earlier, the, the JSON file stores the variables and it gets passed into the Docker Compose file when a run actually starts. So users really just have to worry about that configuration. All right, so let's actually start a run and see what happens. So, run starts, creates, creating stuff. Let's look at the Docker stats over here. The runs are spinning up. Emmy's starting to be utilized. Let's see, these are set. So this attack increases the memory load. So we're we'll watching this as this goes to be going up as the run continues. Oh, it's already spiked, yep, 14%. So attack is working. So let's actually go into one of those images. Let's kill. Gosh. This is our image. You can look at ifconfig. Only has that one IP address, but we know we are we want to make sure we had multiple IPs running, so yep, have our IPs. We can also make sure our environment variables got set. Yeah, test duration 50, the max thread 75. So everything that JSON we said there gets passed to the image, it's doing its stuff. Attack is working. You see the memory spiked up, hitting almost 25%. And this Apache kill is using such little memory. So it's even using less memory than the actual client image and it's doing all this damage. So this kind of highlights what the actual attack is doing. Uh, let's see. Let's 
exit this. Run is probably almost finished. Uh, upper stats. Still, oh, yep, the run is starting to finish now. Stopping set. You see the resources going down. Yep, memory's going down. And then our data has to be started to populate once it shuts down that. Yep, shut down, running, getting a nice PCAP file. You see this run. Most of the, so one of the big things we want is the attribution, how, what, how many attacked and clients were there. We can see the percentage the attack overwhelmingly takes over in this because once the attack starts, those benign clients can't get any connections going. Well, let's actually look at our data. So, oops, copy CD there. All right, so lots of CSV files to look through. Uh, have the, you can actually see how the Apache server responds during the attack at each timestamp. See the memory, how much data is sent. You can also look at, make sure we have our IPs and client, or our IPs labeled. We know which IP maps to what. And then our holy grail is really kind of this network data. So, so this uh, machine learning CSV has over 80 features and the label feature, labeled features. So we know which, what actual IP sent this as a client, as an attacker. And this is very useful for identifying the kind of features that are in a client and attacks. And of course, we need to be able to have the, the PCAP, which is kind of the, the main source of truth. So we can, each run produces a PCAP. So here's that PCAP, oops. Perfect, so this is kind of what researchers really want. They want to have this kind of raw data to look back on, but this is a very hard format to use data, as you can see, and it's very, a lot of libraries aren't really good at parsing it very easily, so that's why we kind of do that for them and provide that CSV with nice labeled data set. And yeah, that's about it. So you see Magic Wand really encapsulates the ability to start up a run, this chain to JSON files, and you have a nice, machine readable CSV ready to go for kind of model training. Uh, images on GitHub, uh, Docker Hub, CLI, you can download it via pip. Uh, contributing, we have ways of how a person can contribute to Magic Wand. Magic Wand is designed to be extensible, so really want researchers to kind of add their own frameworks and attacks and system under test to test. We kind of put this base framework together, but it's very extensible. That's key. And yeah, that's Magic Wand in a nutshell. All right, to recap, Magic Wand is a platform to provide high quality, reliable, and reproducible data sets for DDoS attacks. With the use of Docker, it's very easy to encapsulate each component and have a JSON file configure those components and then have our CLI tool stand up all those components so they can communicate with each other and produce data that can be used for training machine learning models. And Docker was instrumental in this process as trying to stand this up on physical hardware or cloud resources would have been a cost that would have been a bit too much for uh, normal resources to kind of just play around and test things up. So Docker really helped with that iteration cycle. As we saw Magic Wand because it uses Docker, it's very extensible, and we can add in different type of attacks, different type of clients, different type of system under test, even extra uh, sensors. We had our round trip sensor, but there could be also other type of sensors other researchers might want to have in each run. So we're very happy with the platform. Uh, it is open source. Uh, we're happy to kind of show how this was built and how we leveraged Docker, and I hope you enjoyed this talk. Thank you.